Peter Tompkins here, and thank you for tuning into my channel. I hope uh, you've enjoyed some of my videos up to this point. And today, what I want to talk with you about is something near and dear to my heart, and that's the art of photography. Now, first of all, this is designed for people who are thinking about or dabbling in photography that would like to become a photographer. The first thing you've got to know is that you do not need a fancy camera to be a photographer. All you need today to start is you need your phone, your cell phone. That's all you need because the camera in this sometimes takes better pictures than this fancy, fancy schmancy thing. Okay. So if you're just starting out, walk around, get some time to yourself, drive someplace you know is picturesque, and start snapping pictures. That's the first thing. Just use this. Don't go out and invest in thousands of dollars of equipment. Because I tell you what, go on to eBay or go on to Amazon or go on to uh, Backpage or, um, and you're going to find hundreds of these things for sale. Because everybody and their mother went out and bought one when it became popular or whatever and they, they didn't have any fun with it anymore. It was too frustrating. The equipment was expensive. They lost their interest in it and they sold all their equipment. But if you're, if you're just starting out, if you're literally just starting out, the camera does not make the photographer any more than, than the guitar makes the guitarist or the paintbrush makes the painter, you know, or so on, all right? What makes a photographer is their ability to see, okay? Because once you learn to see, if you haven't learned to see the picture before you take it, that's the key, learning to see the picture before you take it, then all you're doing is taking pictures. You're just a picture taker. You're not a photographer. And what I mean by that is once you walk into a setting and you've trained your eye, you're going to be able to see the photograph before you snap it. You're going to walk into a friend's house or down the street or into the woods or on a mountainside, and you're, you're going to get this feeling in the gut of your you know, pity your stomach and you go, that's a good picture. You're going to know it before you pick up the camera to take the picture. So you've got to learn to train your eye. And this is how you're going to learn to see. Now, in order to teach yourself how to learn to see, what you've got to do is start looking at other people's pictures. Established, well-known artists such as Ansel Adams or... Um, oh, Annie Leibovitz, of course. Yes, Annie Leibovitz. I could have... Yeah. So what happens when you get older, you start losing your marbles. Do a, a search on Google for famous photographers. And I'd look at some of the older photographers from some of the turn of the century people from you know the 1900s and the you know the early people, really early people when photographers knew. Look at some of the World War II photographers. Look at Elliot Erwitt. He's he's an American advertising and documentary photographer known for his black and white cannon shots uh, of ironic and absurd situations. Dorothea Lang, or Lange, uh, did some amazing work of the um, Dust Bowl days and Depression days. And just look at the lighting, look at the composition, uh, look at the overall feel, what, what the picture does to you. Because you'll, you, you know when a photograph's good is when you see it. And like, like for me, when I see a photo, <coughs> excuse me, like when I see this picture by uh, Dor Dorothea um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing her name right, Lange, Lang or Lange. She's got a picture called Tractored Out, Child is Country, Texas, 1938. Now, I'm, I don't know a lot about this picture, but I'm assuming it's from the Dust Bowl days, someplace out west. Oh, it's Texas, I'm sorry, duh, it's Texas. It says so right in the title. Um, this picture is a phenomenal use of rule of thirds, okay? And it also creates a tremendous feel. This is an excellent photograph. It's such a mo uh, it creates such emotion. It it defines the barrenness, the desperation of the Dust Bowl days. Um, I'm just guessing that's what it's about. But look at the starkness of the picture. It's like this house in the middle of the moon, and the shadows created that she captured in the black and white print. The shadows of the um, tractored out sand with the with the dead and dying um, crop that used to be around this this once probably proud farmhouse and family the, the house is weathered it's beaten and I can tell you right now if you don't know how to see yet you could drive right past this barn and not think anything of it okay 
Uh, but if you have studied work by photographers and artists like this, you will start to see these things in the landscape. Okay, it'll start to just literally jump out at you and you'll stop the car and you'll be like, stop the car, I've got to take a picture of this old house in the middle of the field. And your wife or your husband will be like, what the blank is your problem, honey? I'm on the way to a busy thing, you know. You know, it'll get, it'll, you'll see it. It'll just, it'll just grab you by the throat and throw you to the ground and say, you've got to take a picture of me right now. Henry Cartier-Bresson. Um... He was a French humanist photographer, considered a master of candid photography, and an early user of 35 millimeter films. Now, what I, I'm not real, real familiar with this man's work, but from what I've seen of his work, he used a very small um, 35 millimeter camera, but he had a he had a knack of capturing the essence of a moment in time. Now, I don't know the title of this particular photograph of the little girl running on the cobblestone but one thing to look at is look at how he just happened to catch a little girl running through the light um, shining through a, it looks like a window of some sort or reflecting off of a window then another thing you should see is the patterns that are repeated within the picture the pattern of the reflected light on the cobblestone with a little girl in it is also in all the windows behind her on the wall which creates a sense of unity in the picture, creates a rhythm as well. The you could look at is Edward Steichens, or Steichens. He was, a, um, I believe he was a, a fashion photographer for Condé Nast, which is a, a, like a magazine, um, fashion magazine. Um, but he's got a picture that's just amazing. It's called uh, Two Boys on a Pier. He's also got a photograph of a Navy Hellcat or Wildcat taking off of an aircraft carrier in the Pacific Ocean. This is a phenomenal picture because the lighting he captured is just amazing. The way the sun's reflecting off the top of the ocean, surface of the ocean with the Hellcat silhouetted against it, and the way the edges of the cloud are illuminated by the sun. It's all very well composed. The, the sun kind of pulls it all together. The, what you've got to do, use basic and simple tool, tools first. Get, get your camera out of, on your cell phone. No, don't get the camera out, but you know, click on the camera um, application. But you don't have to carry around a lot of equipment. You don't have to have a flash. It's built in. You don't even need a flash most of the time. And once you start to carry this around practice with just a cell phone, once you learn to see a lot of the things that you'll see about the lighting and the exposure and the composition will somehow be ingrained into your mind. That's what's happened to me because I'll walk into an environment. I'll walk into a movie theater or a down walk down a city street and depending on the time of day and depending on a whole variety of things you'll start to see the picture in your mind before you take it you'll know it's a good picture and you'll go ah I'm gonna take that picture don't worry about buying one of these don't buy, don't even think about it you don't need it and eventually you can get one of those depending on what you decide to do with it but just have fun with it just learn to see and practice looking at all the other photographers that are out there and established look through all their work um, you don't have to go out and buy books there's no need to buy you know um, anybody's books now go online and look at Ansel Adams and Leibowitz Edward uh, Station give that a shot try it out my next series my next episode will be what to look at and how to take a picture okay thanks a lot if you like this picture just wrong way Pete oh, down there like it sign up subscribe or whatever you like to do. Thanks. Bye.